Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Firmwood tonight. Uh, those of you regulars who watch us every night know that the program uh, always, usually starts the same with a shot of the audience and uh, Jerry yelling over the band <laughs> and, and then a very amusing little uh, speech by yours truly. Just sort of a little icebreaker to put our guests and our studio audience kind of at ease. Although some people have said, and I think rightly so, that it is a show in itself, and thank you. Um, oh, thank you. Um, oh, thank you. No, no, oh, come on. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think there's a, I think there's a time to laugh. I don't think it's all the time. For example, uh, you wouldn't laugh during open heart surgery or an income tax audit, that type of thing. So tonight, if you'll, uh, so tonight, if you'll forgive me, I, I'd just like to get serious here for just about a minute, okay? What the heck's going on? Sorry. <laughs> Trying to be serious. Just heard a lot of silence. <laughs> okay. Um, you probably wonder what I was thinking about that got me so serious so quickly. I know I did. Good. I'm going to tell you. I received a letter today which, well, it didn't anger me so much as it saddened and shocked me. If a person doesn't like this show, that is certainly his or her right. This isn't Russia. <laughs> but this person went on to claim that not once, but many times, I have abused this medium that I master. That I have used, that I've used the power of television to toot my own horn and, and advance my own financial interests. Jeez. I had hoped it wouldn't have come to this, but I'm afraid it has. I think it's time to clear the air and, and to make sort of a public vow in the presence of all the viewers of Channel 6 and the great viewer upstairs. Who probably gets all the channels. I'm sure he does, yes, sir. No I tuning won't... problem up there, huh? No, he probably gets UHF. <laughs> I'll make you this vow. Uh, do we have a Bible here? I think we do. Well, I don't think we really need it. I, I can do it without a Bible. <laughs> Happy, can I have some vowing music, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, Barth Gimble, vow that I will use the great power of my position solely for the good of mankind and womankind. If there's anything I can do to help the good people of Fernwood, like the folks at Marty's Discount Jewelry, believe me, I'll do my part, whatever it is. Whether it's wearing a new Pulsar watch to replace the one I've had now for six lousy years, whether it's showing off a gold ring with my birthstone, which is topaz for the month of August, if I can lend my name and support to any worthwhile community project or viable business, just call. And this is not limited just to the businesses that already exist in Fernwood, no. This also includes as well, enterprises that our growing economy so sorely needs. For example, a Porsche dealership would be nice, a Gucci outlet, or a reputable swimming pool contractor. And we're talking in ground, not above. That's what Barth Gimble's all about. I could use a tape recorder, too. Okay, and a tape recorder for Jerry. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Now let's have some fun. We got this serious, serious stuff out of the way here. Right now, I'd like you to meet one of the uh, fellows in the band, Happy Kind and the Mirth Makers over here. Some of his friends have uh, always asked him, hey, why doesn't Barth have you over sit on the couch and uh, talk a little bit instead of just playing your bass? Well, you're about to find out why. I think, um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, our bass player, Mr. Eddie Thomerson. Oh. Thank you. 
Hey, that thing doesn't even make a noise when it's not plugged in, does it? <laughs> no, it's just kind of like an electric ironing board. Daddy. Oh, that's great. You made that yourself, too. He's very handy. Um, you don't have to shake my hand, really, when you come over here and pretend like you don't know me. You know, I'd know that suit and tie anywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. We see each other every day, really. I, I, I don't think we have to pretend those things. Um, you're here, Eddie. Your friends have been asking to hear you sit down, talk a little bit. What do you want to talk about? Well, gee whiz, Bart. Uh, I don't know. I just thought you'd ask me some questions, and I'd give you the answers. <laughs> okay. Um, why not, Eddie? <laughs> Tell me, uh, Ed. Can I call you Ed? Sure can. Okay, Eddie. I know you don't play music uh, as your sole source of income. You do have another job, am I right? That's what, right. What would that be? I sell uh, real estate in Fernwood and in the Tri-County area. Mm -hmm. How's business going? Oh, fine, thank you. Just fine. But uh, obviously selling real estate is what you do best, and uh, we have you here <laughs> doing what you do second best. Uh, maybe you can do something for us tonight. Don't you perform around? Certainly. As a matter of fact, I, I uh, have a number I prepared for tonight. Ooh. What is it? Uh, how about a bit of La Bamba? Oh, well, I have my good clothes on. I don't think I should. Why don't you do <laughs> You go over there and set up. Okay. La Bamba. <laughs> I got a touch of dysentery just listening to him play that Mexican music. That's more than wow. understandable. Yeah. Good Richard. thing it wasn't watered down. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, you can hardly pick up a newspaper nowadays without seeing a report of someone somewhere sighting a, a UFO. That's the un unidentified flying object. Yeah. Um, they be called unidentified, but people are still identifying them. No, they're, un they're identifying the unidentifiability right. of them, actually. <laughs> recently, <laughs> recently uh, a woman right here in Fernwood not only cited one of those things, but she claims she came into intimate contact with an alien from another planet. Hey. Uh, she's come here tonight to tell us her story, so would you please welcome Mrs. Sylvia Miller. Our spaceship. Thank what? you. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> well, we're very happy to have you. I'm sure everyone's uh, pretty eager to just hear your story. Why don't you start right in? Yes. Well, let me tell you how it was with me. It was uh, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It was a Thursday. It was uh, very much like any other Thursday. I was out in my backyard taking down my wash. Sure. And I was standing there, and all of a sudden, I noticed a huge beam of white light. Well, at first, I thought perhaps I had used too much bleach, but then <laughs> the light became uh, whiter and whiter, and I watched it, and it, it uh, went behind my house in the meadow. You've never been there, but there's yeah. a meadow. And the strangest thing happened, all of a sudden, uncontrollably, I began to uh, go towards the beam of light, just walking uncontrollably, still clutching a pair of my husband's shorts. And as I got closer to the beam of light, the sky turned blue, and all of a sudden, through the blueness, at this point, I could make out a, a metal object, I would say, perhaps 30 feet this way. Oh, boy. And um, <laughs> as I approached it, a huge ramp shot from this uh, thing, and all of a sudden, at the end of the ramp, there was a door, and the door opened, and at this particular time, a uh, blue man of about two feet with antennas 
walked toward me, and the next thing that happened really just shocked shocked me to death. I'll tell you the truth. Well, um, I know it's hard for you to talk about it. Um, could you tell us what happened next? Well, the next thing the next thing that happened is uh, he threw open his spacesuit, and a beam of light shot right out at me. Uh -oh. <laughs> I said, what in the universe is this? I'm yeah. sorry. Those didn't have anything to do with your bleach. Uh, no. Uh, washing machine. no. And uh, as the beam of light uh, shot towards me, uh, all of my clothes came off. Holy cow, like a white tornado, like they say on TV. That's just incredible. Yes, uh, they just, uh, for, for some reason, flew off, including my husband's underwear. <laughs> Which we have not found. Yeah, which you were holding rather than wearing. Oh, yes, at that time holding them rather than wearing Throw that them. that up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, at this particular time, that's exactly what happened. So you were just standing there naked as the day you were born, basically. Yeah. Yes, I was naked, uh-huh. Uh, and was he naked, too? Uh, I mean, the individual, not your husband. The one who the came out. The blue man? Yes. That's a very good question. Uh, well, let me let me be honest. I don't know because you see, I have nothing to compare it with. Let me think. Uh, to, he certainly wasn't anything like my husband. That's good or bad? Well, we don't know until we hear the rest of the story. I don't think. Yes. yes uh, hmm. But uh, anyhow, it was at this time that uh, he. Uh, I don't know how to put this delicately. Uh, had his way with me. Oh boy. <laughs> Okay, well, I think you put it very delicately. Um, I put it put a lot less delicately. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Just a second here, though. Uh, I, I, this is, I mean, this is all so fantastic. Are you, are you trying to tell me that, that you were abused by an intergalactic being? I'm not sure that I understand that terminology. Are you trying to tell me? <laughs> It was definitely an interracial thing. Yeah. So at that particular time, of, naturally, of course, I started to scream. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, nothing came out of my mouth. Has that ever, I went, <sighs> nothing. Uh, has that ever happened to you? Just when I'm doing the search breath test. Yes. <laughs> uh, it was a terrible thing. And then at this particular point in time, I was uh, violated with a beam of light. Mm. <laughs> Actually, uh, Mrs. Meller, could you actually call it a violation if it was simply a beam of light? I mean, really. Of course it was a violation if the light goes where he shined it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, might as well get right down to it here. Did you feel any physical pain? No, it was not painful. It was humiliating. But I know that I was violated. How long did this attack actually last, this attack of beaming? Just seconds, seconds. Wow, he must be quite a guy. <laughs> the, the serious thing, the thing that I pray and I, I worry so much about, I just hope that I am not carrying a half-breed creature. I mean, for all I know, I could be giving birth to a flashlight. Uh. Oh, boy. You never know when you get him on the show what it's going to turn into. This is uh, <laughs> it's a bigger story than I thought. Are you actually trying to say that you could possibly whew, be pregnant <laughs> by a man from outer space? I mean, that's pretty hard to buy. That's what my husband said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would like to, speaking of deviations, I would like to deviate for a minute. I happen to know these TV beams go into outer space, and I'd like to take an opportunity to address this intergalactic pervert out there. And uh, this is Jerry Hubbard down here on Earth. This is not how we handle the women in this world. You're dealing with the, the, the ladies of America here. It's not wham, bams, thank you, ma'am. I'll tell you that. I'm telling you, next time you get an idea to come down here to one of our women, the least you can do is take them out for a couple of drinks, maybe a nice dinner. Would that kill you? Maybe a movie.
Bobby, uh, you like to go to movies, don't you, Mrs. Miller? Let's take her out and uh, shove some scrambled eggs and coffee down her throat. It wouldn't hurt to say an occasional, hey, you're looking nicer. Is that a new dress you got on? And then a little later, if uh, she doesn't have a headache or she doesn't have to get up early, then maybe it's time for wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You don't carry on like that with our women, believe me. Next time you try it and uh, you keep your laser beat Jerry. yourself, we'll cut off your batteries and hand them to you on a silver platter. Mrs. Miller, uh, do you think, uh, think there's any any chance at all that the guy's going to return? Guy, I use the term loosely, guy. Do you think he, you think he might come back? Well, of course, it's all a matter of scheduling. You see, I never know from minute to minute what planet he's going to be visiting. And then, of course, my husband has only one night when he goes bowling, so I don't know. I guess I'll just have to look it up to nature's course. Of course, this course would be outer course, wouldn't it? <laughs> back after these important words. Don't go. <laughs> Thank you. Happy kind in the orchestra. Let's hear it. Thank you. That's plenty. You know, tonight marks the return of our Tri-County Freelance Consumer Investigator. Wonderful man who's helped us uh, look at all the rip-offs going around for the consumer these days in Ohio, all over the Midwest. Please welcome with me Mr. Lou Moffat. <laughs> if you were with us earlier, uh... Oh, I should say hello. How do you do? Uh, hello. Good to see you. You were with us earlier in the earlier weeks. You saw when Lou came out here and showed us some of the dangers of the rip-offs of the music, home music industry, mm -hmm. and where we could get some really good guitar lessons that would add up to a song. <laughs> also, you showed us the wonder of the Wonder Blender. Wonder Blender, that's and correct, Barth. You're, you're a wonderful watchdog, and you're making sure the consumer is protected. What have you got for us tonight? Well, Barth, I've been investigating this land fraud business in recreational land. It's appalling oh. what's going on around this country. It really is. <laughs> it seems like the fast buck operators are with us again. Well, and we're glad to have you. Okay? Thank you, Barth. <laughs> Go to the place. Oh, well, Barth, good. Hope you're you on. Enjoy it. Thank you. Well, it's good to see everybody. You know, I travel around this great country of ours investigating fraud, and what I found in the real estate business is absolutely appalling, especially down in Florida. If you investigate real estate down there, down there, friends, you'll find it's something like this orange. Watch out, because it could be half water. Something else, too, friends, that I found. <laughs> You know, but frankly, what, what you're looking for in real estate investments, of course, is investor security along with recreational features. Now, that, that's a tough order to fill, isn't it, friends? Well, I found one development I think that I could recommend. Beautiful Lake of the Slough. <laughs> Sounds terrific, doesn't it, friends? You bet it is. Because let me tell you, if that development had an apple tree, you'd think it was the Garden of Paradise. <laughs> and frankly, friends, now is the time to buy a beautiful lake of the slough because this is, this is a drought year, as you know, and there's no water in it. <laughs> First good rain, the whole thing could disappear just like that. <laughs> Let me tell you something, friends. I've got some pictures here. Let me show you how beautiful this is. Take a look right over here. Isn't that great? Sure. <laughs> This is beautiful Lake of the Slough, huh? Sure. You know, Palm Springs, huh? Honolulu, that's an understandable mistake. Now, right over here, of course, this has every recreational feature you've ever dreamed of, and it's all in, ready to go. Look right over here. Here's the proposed golf course right down here. Doesn't it look good? Here's the tennis courts. That'll be right here on the side of this ridge. It looks good, doesn't it, now? You know, and they're already planting seeds where eventually giant redwoods will be growing. <laughs> Monarchs of the forest, their leafy arms raised in silent prayer. <laughs> here's something for Dad right there. And here's something for Mother. Here's the proposed uh, clubhouse right there. I know she'll be interested in that. Sure. Now, it looks great, doesn't it, friends? Sure, but what about ecology? You know, is something going to happen to this land? Well, no, sir, friends. They're, they're not going to pave those roads there. They managed to keep out all those architects, all those sissy planters that come in there with their septic tanks. No, sir, friends, there'll be none of that. Because when you live at beautiful Lake of the Slough, believe me, you're going to be on your own. Now, 
As a real American, <laughs> is $500 too much to spend for a slice of America for a big one-sixth acre? No, sir. <laughs> Yes, for only 10% down, that's $50. Here's what you're going to get. First of all, this map right here showing you how to get to a beautiful lake of the slough. <laughs> and next, of course, here's another map showing you how to get out. <laughs> and that comes complete, friends, with a hatchet and a compass and three flares. <laughs> on how you can get this, friends. We'll send $50 today to Lake of the Slough Lots, Post Office Box 78924, Fernwood, Ohio, 45989. Hey, which one of you folks would like one of these? Come on up here. We'll be right back after a look at some professional actors playing normal, everyday people in commercials. Stay with us. Miller, a wonderful, exciting story, and maybe we can go into chapter two sometime. It'd be kind of interesting. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. Also, Happy Kind, the orchestra, Mirth Makers over there, Jerry Hubbard, and my old buddy, Lou Moffat. Without watchdogs like you, where we're in. We're in <laughs> Great job. Okay, we'll talk later. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>